In the previous World of Religion videos, the ancient writer represents Jesus as saying, Religion is based on the authority of tradition. Religious leaders burden their followers and make no effort regarding the burden. Everything religion does, it does to be noticed. Religion wants to be revered. Religious leaders want to be put on display and honored, and religious leaders adopt lofty titles. Religion is an impediment to being in the way. Religion is calloused. And religion searches far and wide for adherence and then makes those new converts miserable. In the previous video to this one, we began the ancient writer's depiction of Jesus concerning stuff, staff, and rituals. In this video, the ancient writer has Jesus continuing this counterfeit nature of religion. Woe to you, religion, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind religion, first clean the inside of the cup and of the dish, so that the outside of it may become clean also. Religion whispers in your innermost ear a prioritized checklist of some acceptable image. When you try to go there, it may make you sad. Frustrated that you cannot measure up, I still ask myself regularly, if I still learn how to look good and how to sound good, that I've forgotten how to just be good? There must be a better way. The answer lies on the inside of the cup. Religion seems satisfied by random acts of kindness seen outwardly, rather than a healthier ongoing and visceral way to be inside. Religion spends relatively little time on the inward journey. The repetitious rigor of religion places a focus on the stuff staff and the rituals. To survive, how could it be otherwise for religion? The ancient writer continues by having Jesus saying, Religion is therefore dead inside. Woe to you, religion hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you too outwardly appear righteous to others, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Religion lives in a surreal state of mind, sometimes in business casual, sometimes in a beautiful robe and a broad stole. Religion stands before its parishioners, satisfying their demand for a weekly feeling. The way provides a means of finding inward contentment, peace in spite of life's troubles or the pressures others place on us. For the majority of my time in religion, my salaries came primarily from providing momentary escapism from these pressures. I should have been a purveyor of the way that makes a follower of the way more content and resilient throughout every area of life, in family, faith, and career. Religion desperately protests, Jesus is talking about someone else, not me. Religion disputes its own existence. The ancient writer attributes to Jesus one last woe, declaring religion's propensity to deny its own role and identity. Woe to you, religion hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, if we had been living in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Consequently, you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Religion's throat is sore from insisting it is not the ones to whom Jesus refers. We might say, had we been living when Jesus spoke, we would not have done as religion did, we would have followed the way. The hypocritical practices outlined by the ancient writer could not be more evident in our own religious lives today. We bear witness against ourselves. If the phylactery fits, wear it. We are they. Then the ancient writer has Jesus saying religion has been in the past, will be in the future, and is presently threatened, defensive, and predictable. Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise persons and journalists. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your religious halls and persecute from city to city, that upon you may fall the guilt of the righteous blood shed on earth. From the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the religious hall and the altar, truly I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. 
If the ancient writer was correct in his assertions, Jesus was threatening religion's position in society. He predicted religion had always, and would always, continue to resist such threats, whatever it takes. We see it today. Religion seems to be never-ending, a cycle of going back to the future, of faith in our stuff, staff, and ritual.